Hey guys, I'm James on occasion, and today, more Thorgrim campaign. Now, we're doing rather well. We've managed to kick uh, Revictus back out of the world's edge mountains. Uh, honestly, it was a masterstroke of his to, like, declare war on me and then run off in a completely different direction to conquer more territory, because, um, yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea where he'd ended up, just because I knew which territories he would have that he did have when he declared war on me. And then he ended up with, like, a bunch of others. So I had no idea where he was going to attack from. It was clever. It was clever. I'll give him that. But, uh, well, he's dead now. At least for a little while. So that's good. Uh, so one thing as well I want, to, uh, I want to point out. Just, I'm sure most of the people who are still arguing about it um, have stopped watching the series. But I'm still getting so many comments saying that I'm wrong about... Um, you know, this whole Age of Reckoning thing. And I got one comment that's especially funny. Um, and it's it's generally most of most of the complaints are formed in this same you know, same kind of logical trap. Uh, which is that Thorgrim is High King because he settled a lot of grudges. And so he should be on the clock to settle lots of grudges, because that's his thing, settling grudges. Forgetting the fact that he has agency over that, he you know, he chose to do that. He, there was no arbitrary ticking clock forcing him to do it. And also, that's how he became High King. And then now he's High King, he has loads of responsibility, where he actually needs to maintain the Empire, not just frivolously chase grudges. Right? So yes, he will do that from time to time, and those times are the ones that you get stories for, because a story of him going, no, I'm gonna stay home, that sounds a bit reckless. That would be a crap story. So we only ever get the anecdotes of him settling the grudges, but you know, if you know anything about dwarves, you know that they actually it's very dishonourable right, this, let's extrapolate from Ungrim, alright, Ungrim's entire thing is he's a slayer so he needs to die recklessly uh, well, not recklessly honourably, but you know, it's got to be a certain degree of recklessness to go chasing things, but also, that would be dishonourable because he's also king and his responsibility is to his hold, and he needs to make sure that he's a good king first right, he can't like, he can't just single-mindedly go and stamp out evil. Same with Thorgrim. He can't single-mindedly go and strike out grudges because he needs to maintain the Empire. He needs to keep his people safe. All right, it's not just him going off on an adventure anymore. Right? He's got to keep people safe. So, an arbitrary ticking clock doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't, right? But, right, in the scope of Warhammer, where it's, you know, total war Warhammer, where it's big armies, that's a lot of resources that you need to, like, cool to, to enact something like this. So, you would need a decree from the High King, obviously. So, you know, give him agency over it, because his backstory, he has agency. If you extrapolate the logic of he settled a bunch of grudges, so he should be forced to do it indefinitely, um, you know, with an arbitrary timer and potential like punishments for not doing so, you could actually do the exact same thing with Karl Franz. Right? Karl Franz also has a backstory. Most characters do. He fought the Battle of Blackfire Pass. And yet, his campaign, right, and, and I don't think I've seen anyone insist on this being a mechanic, but his campaign doesn't have a ticking clock that says you need to fight in a canyon, right, X number of times, um, you know, every 15 turns, or you'll have to pay higher upkeep on things, okay? Just going, they have a backstory that this loosely connects to doesn't warrant having a timer. It just, it just doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. So, um, you know, uh, the, the time, Mal Malekith, he loves invading Ulthorn. That's like his whole deal, right? If he doesn't invade Ulthorn every 15 turns, he's going to get, he's going to get an upkeep, you know, penalty. It doesn't make any sense, guys. It doesn't, there's no logic to it at all. So, anyway, you know, how about we get rid of the arbitrary clock in the sandbox, so that way you can play the sandbox game in a way that you want to, because it's a sandbox, you know? I think that's... I, I, I don't think... I, I don't think I've seen any other arguments um, other than, like, oh, but Thorgrim does grudges, so the timer to do grudges makes sense. Like, that, that's the only argument I've seen, um, and it's not very good. So, I think I win, and uh, this, this will obviously be, um, um, be changed in the next patch. I'm crossing my fingers. I actually don't know. It probably won't be, but like, come on. Come on. Come on. Do it. Change it. Let me enact it myself. I'm High King. I should have the power to cool this thing. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to fight more uh, Skaven. And I know that's another like five minutes to moaning about that mechanic. No, it's a problem. I'm getting a lot of dislikes on this series. Um, but, you know, I think I'm winning, so it's okay. So let's Actually, let's do a bit of building. Let's get some more gems. I like gems. So let's get the Gem Cutters Workshop. Uh, it does actually make hammers a little bit cheaper. Oh, well, that's good. 
an extra percent off. Well, that'll save us. That'll save us like a couple of gold. Nice. Well, now we're going to be rolling in it. We're saving a couple of gold. Let's crack on. Welcome, King. How may the High King serve thee? Uh, yeah, non-aggression pack sounds good, mate. Sounds good. Um, I think Zafar's actually like fully good. Uh, he can give me a little. He can give me a little bit extra, not much. But yeah, he's he's fine at the moment, which is nice. Oh no, Karakazul, buddy. Oh, we lost we lost Kazador. I mean, to be fair, we do have another one, so I guess it's not so bad. Uh, Thorgrim did get spotted there, which is a shame, but he seemed to have got spotted maybe at the end of the turn, because they didn't seem interested in coming for us, which is nice. Uh, Confederation, rubbish, hate it. Let's complain about that mechanic, too. Um, I normally disable it, but, you know, I played this before the patch. I might, I might see if that mod works, actually, to disable Confederation. Um, yeah, again, sandbox. I love the variety. I love the variety of factions. And actually, a bunch of, like, a big alliance teamed up on you um, is a lot more deadly. Uh, it's a lot more deadly than a single large faction. Just because of the way, like, every faction has, like, a, a default amount of income. So even if you have one settlement, you can support a full stack. So the more divided a territory... Well, to an extent, there's still, like, recruitment option issues. But the more divided a territory is, the more powerful it is if it is united against... A, a common enemy. They also attack from more directions, um, which is better. It's better to attack enemies from multiple directions. It's a lot harder for them to defend than if they just had, like, you know... I mean, you've, you've played this game, right? Just generally, if you're at war with someone, they attack you from the same place over and over again, because they're just sort of natural ways to sort of path through their territory into yours most of the time, and they just take that same, you know, sort of short, like shortest route every time. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it makes it a lot harder if you don't have all factions turning into one homogenous blob. So, uh, we really don't need to fight this at all. We really don't. I'm just going to skip it. It's, it's too many Skaven slaves. They'll just melt as soon as we touch them. So yeah, no threat there. Uh, I am going to upgrade Mount Silver Spear this time. Um, so he's got some hands. Warlock Master, so he's got Warp Lightning. I'm just wondering if I can I can take them on. I don't think I can quite, but if I did get a bunch of regiments renowned, I could definitely take them on. What? I mean, I have nine. Nine units. And I could get another three. So I could go up to 12 units immediately. I think it would bankrupt me immediately, actually. The upkeep on all this is way too high. <laughs> I think I'll wait for Thorgrim to run over here. Alright, Tom Philipson. <clears throat> he has... I think we could do boost income. It's not going to do much, but uh, from time to time, he'll give us a little boost. Uh, so let's look at the deeps. So we've got this building, so next turn we'll have this. That's going to upset the Skaven, Greenskins and Chaos Dwarves. Um, speaking of... Okay, this is interesting. I was going to say, speaking of Greenskins, we are at war with one. Um, at least one, you know, clan. But they're getting wrecked, because it seems Can that the ogres reward them. Yeah. The ogres are doing very well for themselves. And honestly, like, I mean, dwarves do have guns. You know, they do have guns, they do have ranged units that are very good, but they don't have anti-large. You know, they don't have, like, they don't have spearmen or halberds that can just hold the line against this stuff. Um, you know, most ogres have very high weapon strength or, or a fair amount of armor piercing, so they're quite good against dwarves if you don't have a gun line. If there's a gun line, they're screwed. Um, but we don't have a gun line, you know? We don't have guns that could shoot over the heads of our dwarves into the, you know, fleshy bellies of the of the ogres. So, bit of a tough one. Bit of a tough one. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. They might just not declare war on us, but I, I can't imagine that's true. Uh, we do want to take more of the world's edge mountains, really, don't we? Hopefully, once we deal with these jerks, I can send Cazador, like, south and into this area, maybe? Perhaps. We really just need to wipe out Clan Rictus, though. Let's focus on that for now, and let's just hope everything else will be fine. That usually works, right? Just sort of blind hope that no one's going to pick a fight? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm going to leave these building slots, I think. I'm going to leave these building slots.
Okay, recruit, recruiting surplus or war fervor? I mean, neither are particularly useful, I guess. Recruiting surplus, we might do a bit of recruitment in the next few turns. Scabii have been destroyed, so we've lost another enemy. Nice. So, they say you revel in victory. They say you spend more time erecting monuments to battles past than managing the realm. They say you are a fool. Perhaps a more humble approach. Scabii destroyed, and we have the Silver Road. Well, no, the Silver Road is the place. We have the Underdeep Trade Routes. Underdeep trade routes are dangerous, but in times of need can be extremely efficient, especially if your traders aren't stretched too thin. Well, let's hope they've had plenty to eat. You know, because then they won't be thin. Um, now let's have a look. That will remove a couple of blocked tunnels. And give us a thane. I feel like I feel like we just want to keep developing this. Even though we're not earning that much money from Karata Karak. This can earn so much cash. Like, it has the potential to earn so much. How is it earning so little? I feel like it should be earning more than that. But then I guess these aren't very high level yet, are they? They're really not. Yeah, I guess, I guess once this is all way up, it'll be a heck of a lot more. I mean, we're getting 800. Once this is leveled up, it'll be getting 600 all on its own. And how much are the gems? Be another 600. And a bunch of gems, which, you know, we could trade, obviously. Um, yeah, it's a shame we can't get both of these buildings. You know? It's a shame. It's a shame. We nice to get both of the income buildings. Alright, let's have a look. Um, so... Time for a reckoning. Run, run. What is the plan? Mount Greyhag and then hop over to the Tower of Gorgoth? I think so. But maybe going straight to the Tower of Gorgoth might be better, but Infectic here is recruiting. Stupid, stupid. So he's probably going to go for Crookback Mountain, right? Like, eventually? Not it's honestly, it's hard to know. It's hard to know. I think what I'm going to have to do is try and sneak up on him. He's probably going to see us, to be fair. He's probably going to see us. But that's okay if he does. It's actually okay if he does. It's just, it would be nice if he didn't, so he won't know to get out of the way. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Right, well that's the turn done. Moving on. The enemy failed to spot a ambush. Wow. Okay. Sick. That really is surprising. I'm surprised they ran right into it. Love that. So there is, I'm pretty sure, right, I'm pretty sure this still exists, um, though sometimes it can be a little hard to tell, is enemy armies can sometimes be um, really kind of suicidal in the presence of an ambush. Because the game sort of falsely throws things into, um, like, it, it falsely does the pathfinding, so basically if you're in ambush stance, they'll, they're more likely to run at it. Um, if they don't spot it. Because basically it makes you feel clever. If you set an ambush, you probably put an ambush in like a, a clever place. Right? So having the AI just sort of like, you know, <laughs> like a magnet, you know? Um, that makes sense. This feels very much like that just happened. But they could have just been heading to the really knackered settlement. So I don't know how much that is weighted, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they do that. I have seen armies like run completely in the opposite direction to where they're headed just to, like, throw themselves into an ambush. But, uh, you know, as long as you're putting in fairly sensible locations, then uh, it, it feels like it makes sense, right? So, you know. Let's see. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the replenishment, actually. Just so I can stock up a bit. Because we are in enemy territory right now. So we won't be uh, won't be replenishing there. But getting rid of that army is, is rather nice, I must say. Oh, Nemesis Crown's back. Uh, whereabouts is it? It's in the Empire, so yeah, we're not going to go get it. It would be nice to seal this away. Um, you know, in, in recent campaigns, I've tried to I've tried to nab it, but I think sealing it away would actually be quite a good thing. It is, after all, you know, it's a dwarf and invention, so it would be good to get rid of it. But yeah, with it being in the Empire, we're just never gonna we're never gonna see it. Uh, hello, game. The Dragon Crown of Karaz. Okay, well. Some green skins. This is a Battle of Black Fire Pass. It is. It is. Well, there we go. We should also be on... That should also be added to the clock. Fighting canyons. 
Uh, there are dire tidings from the south. Rangers report that a brutal Lord Gorbos has arisen and that hordes of greenskins are flocking to fight under his leadership. A mighty war is forming and seems to be heading north toward the gateway to the Empire's southern border, the fabled Blackfire Pass. This route through the mountains has witnessed countless titanic struggles over the centuries, many of them pivotal to the survival of the old world, where dwarfs and men stood together to hold back disaster. And win again. And we'll get a crown out of it. Uh, immune psychology, physical resist, melee defense, melee attack, long beard recruit rank goes up, better chance of intercepting armies that are tunneling, that's really handy. You know, or using these parts of world routes. And uh, plus three control for all provinces, really good stuff. Also, uh, more settled grudges, but I mean, who cares about that right now? Um, more money, more replenishment, some of gold. It's, it's good stuff. It is good. It is good. Um, I think we should try and do a quest battle today. I think we should. Alright, do I want you? You can't quite reach, so never mind. I say, do I want you to go that way and you can go that way? No, I want to take this this turn. Phew, I almost missed clicks off the edge. That would have been... Bad. Uh, let's do the cheaper long beards and hammerers, I suppose. Because, you know, he's right there. At some point, I do need to actually buff Thorgrim. So he can be, a, like, better in combat. Because at some point, he will be dueling something that's quite good in a fight. And that's going to start to sting a bit. But, you know, until then. Until then. These little sulfur pits. What a horrible place. A horrible place that we're going to endeavour to conquer. You know, we've got to settle those grudges, guys. You know, the Chaos Dwarfs, they're our fault. They're our kin. They shouldn't be... Shouldn't be acting so naughty. We'll put them on the naughty step. And then blow up the step. Alright, let's grab this. Uh, yeah, Assault Expert. Lovely. We discovered someone. And there's also, um... Probably a couple armies over here. Uh, a dwarf bride often comes with a hefty dowry, by tradition her weight in gold, which probably explains why hot-blooded dwarfs take to curvier manes. I do enjoy that. It's a good bit of fluff. Uh, again, a load of extra trade here. Guildmaster. The guilds are as powerful as the clans in dwarf society. A guildmaster can control or break it holds trade, should uh, he be of a mind. And we now have the Desolation of Asgore, which is interesting, because... Uh, because his legion is over here. You think it would be... I mean, I guess that's just where they've, they've desolated. I suppose. But anyway. Uh, maintain three provinces. Finally. Got a bit of extra cash. Right, where are we going to spend that? I mean, ideally, I'd love to level up. Um, Mount Gunbad. Can I get that extra cash? 4,500. Let's see. Let's see. Quick deal. Anyone want to do a deal? Jade Custodians, potentially. I am equipped to talk on military matters. I want to give me 700. Alright. I'm I'm now trading. Over there, which is perfect. You know, we're trading with the Empire, we're trading with a different Empire. You know, a celestial one, which is pretty good. Where am I? Here we go. Uh, Mount Gunbad. Boom. Lovely. Because yeah, I want to get this gold mine. I want to get this gold mine, big and strong. Needs to eat its veggies. Let's give you uh, advanced forging, just so we have it. In case we want to get a runesmith, maybe. Can I be bothered? Probably not. Uh, let's get rally. I don't want to get to stand your ground, because I, I want survivability. So the rune of spite can do its business. And also our ranged units, frankly. You have a front line that doesn't buckle. Gives more time for your guns to shoot. Not that we have really any guns, but yeah, we've got, we got some stuff that can shoot. Not very gunny yet, but we're getting there. Presumably. Um, I mean, at some point, Pillars of Grangny, I want to build another recruitment building in there. I reckon. Or you reckon. Uh, so two more turns, and we'll have a couple more building slots there. They are going to cost us a lot, though. I'm sure of it. I'm not sure what to do with Kazador right now. Not sure what to do with Kazador. Maybe he can just hold out for a second. And hang on a minute. Okay, so the Fortress of Vorag is around here somewhere. Presumably, yeah, you guys are at war. So the Howling Wastes, maybe we can take? Where's the Black Fortress? It's down here, isn't it? I think. So maybe we take them at some point. 
It's hard to know. I definitely want to head over to, you know, Zarnagrund. Definitely want to do that at some point. I want to build a deeps building there, you know? I want to unlock the deeps. It has a special deeps, apparently. Now, let's see. Let's get you... Cheaper construction cost, more tradable goods, and growth. Because, yeah, this could be profitable. You know, Desolation of Asgore. We've got some trade goods, you know? You can level this up. It's all good, probably. Good. We'll soon find out. Grenier's Moving on. A grudge too far. The enemy has wronged us. I hate when they do that. It's probably why they're our enemies, to be fair. Uh, but writing this grudge will cost us deeply, perhaps too deeply. Maybe just this once, why should... Uh, sorry, we should ignore the slight and focus on the grander objective. See, this also is proof. Sometimes they let a grudge go because there's other stuff to do. You know, they still have to prioritize things. But obviously, um, then you don't get the choice to do that at all. You have to do the grudge anyway, which um, sort of goes against my argument. But, um, you know, it does happen, all right? Karak Eight Peaks still hasn't been taken back. And there are still dwarves alive. So let's see, um, oh, this is a tough one guys, it's a tough one, hmm, I mean I feel like I should flip a coin, it's an impossible choice, on a result. So let's have a look here, we have a talisman of preservation now, lovely, yes. do you have uh, anything talisman -y? You don't, well now you do, excellent, I think he will though won't he, yeah, yeah he ends up with a full full complement of, of equipment, which is pretty cool. Okay, pure steel crossbows and precision crafted instruments able to accurately deliver death from afar. So better reload time. Okay, upgrade any settlement to level 5. I mean, I'm working on it, but... You know, looking at our account book, I think it might take a little while. Um, though we might be able to speed that up. That's not done yet. So you might be able to speed that up with an injection of cash from the deeps. No, no none of that. Uh, World's Edge Archway. Let's do that one. Okay, your mightiest fortress may become great. Uh, may become great engines of war. They can. They can indeed. Oop. Right, we should be able to grab that. So what have they got left anyway? I double-click on it all the time to try and load up diplomacy, and I obviously, like, it doesn't work when you can't see the enemy there. So they have two. They have two. And they're actually at war with uh, Legion of Asgore as well. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so they have two settlements. They have this one, and I guess one over here? I think? I'm pretty sure. Then we may have to declare war on these orcs. Oh, they have that too, do they? Uh, a bit spread out. But we are going to go through their lands. So we'll see. I, I guess I could go south first. I could go south first. But then we're going to bump into these flipping algae, aren't we? Flipping algae. Alright, so, um... Yes, yeah, so they have two settlements. So we take that, and... Yeah, they, they can't really get out of it anymore. It so it looks like we've got it handled. Uh, do I want to... I kind of do want to do that, actually. I mean, we have so few, like, so little oath gold. Ooh, I should range for iron drakes. Kind of love that. We don't have any iron drakes yet, but... Yeah, we're going to do cool to clan. Extra melee defense for warriors and longbeards is huge, because every garrison will have, you know, a lot of both of those units, so... You know, a lot of our empire will benefit from that. Uh, let's get some more growth, shall we? Maybe not. Do I want to get some beer? A low corruption in, in neighbouring provinces too, which might be nice. You'll probably build some better recruitment options though, right? Yeah, start getting some artillery. I want some organ guns and flame cannons and such. So yeah, let's build a siege workshop. Let's do that. It might be a while before I actually recruit any. But at that point, I, I'm going to want the option, you know? Okay, more confederation. Call to clan. 
All members of the clan will answer its call, cool, swearing oath against those who have wronged them. And it means we can carry on moving up this way. So, armor for shielded warrior and longbeard units, and extra melee attack. Uh, interlocking shields actually give us shield wall ability. I always forget about that one. And I really love that as an addition. It's fun. Now, let's see how many Skaven live here. Not that many. Not that many. Uh, I'm going to hit continue siege a second. Get out of my way. Oh, okay. I was just to, just to hear it. I want to see what that was over there. Okay, let's occupy that as well. Town of Gorgoth is ours. And yeah, Demon Stump is over here. Perfect. Uh, we could actually make use of the... Um, the canal here, this would teleport us all the way over here, and then we can do war against uh what's his face? You know, thingamajig. I can't I can't look at his You know, disciples of Hashud. What the hell's his name? You know, Jimmy Iron Pants. That's right, isn't it? You know, wrong trousers if it was Grimdark. Um Gromit. Grom Gromdark. So let's get Let's go straight in for some more income, couldn't I? It'll pay for itself in um, 24 turns. Perfect. <laughs> Christ. Uh, so, though, do we have any. We don't have any percentage bonuses or anything here either. Oh, my word. Oh, I could build something down here instead, right? Okay, that will cost Oath Gold, but I don't want to build it anyway. It's stupid. Uh, let's cancel that. I love that we still have this. There is a chance to trigger related events, and we have, don't have that yet. I'm really looking forward to seeing what events we get from that. So, uh, income gain from surface settlement income. I kind of like that. Uh, this will give us oath gold per turn, which I think might be more important. Although it will lower the settlement's income by percentage. Five percent per settlement owned in the local region. So the the larger the region. Although some income plus five percent per turn count. So the longer we have this going, the more money we make. Huh. That's kind of cool. That could really start swelling, couldn't it? Oh, yeah, that's what we're going for. What's the other side? Upkeep minus 2% for all, all units faction wide. Construction cost minus 2% faction wide. Research rate, construction cost, some other goals, yeah. It's fine, but um, yeah, I think I think we go for the per turn one. I mean, that and Kalaz a Kalak could be pretty wild. Alright, so. Um, I don't know what to do with Kazador. I might get rid of him. I feel like he's costing us a lot of money. We can re-recruit him later. But we're, we're just not at war with anyone around here. And he has such a small army that it wouldn't be difficult to just recruit an army like that again. Because, yeah, so we'll just head to de uh, Demon Stump. And I should probably get the gates as I'll push my way this way, actually. I think I'll head straight for the city. Um, this guy, you know, he can, he can live longer. I'll let him, just this once. Uh, it might be a real struggle to, to deal with the capital, though. Like a huge struggle. They tend to have ludicrous amount of armies just sort of sat on it and a huge garrison in the city itself. So, yeah, it's not going to be easy. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this army could necessarily handle it. Uh, oh, can we get something over here, too? That might be nice. Um, start focusing a bit on Oath Gold over here, too. I mean, it's still all right income, really. Let's try and get some more Earth Gold. I really want to start getting this up so we can uh, actually start buying ourselves some trinkets and things, you know? Over here, though, I'm glad I just went for, like, raw money, because we're going to be doing the same. You know, just, like, pushing for money in the deeps. So I want to make sure we have as high a base as possible. Or as deep. Talk, then. But I make no oath for the surety of your life. Crap. Wow, okay, his the balance of power is a little bit a little bit iffy, isn't it? 
Oh dear. Yeah, I think we might be about to have like a very long war against Queek. Um, so Kanaz a Kanak has a really good garrison. Really sturdy. So, kind of love that. Could make it better. Might be worthwhile. But also, we could do some more building. Uh, more income from the surface. Uh, lose a bunch of oath gold per turn. Like a ludicrous amount of oath gold per turn. But it will generate a lot of income. Can't afford to do that. This will make us oath gold. It'll make us more oath gold the more money we have. Which is kind of nice. But we're not earning that much money yet. So it won't be particularly big. Uh, I think we just do this one. Just get a 30% um, bonus to our income on the surface. Uh, when the income... When settlement income is 2,000 or more, we get an additional 10%. And when it's over 5,000, we get another 10%. So you end up with 50% bonus total. That's kind of massive. So yeah, get the ruined counting room. So yeah, Kat as a Kadak is going to be pretty cool pretty soon. Mount Gunbad, I also really want to build a um, entrance to the deeps there as well, just because the gold mine will make it very lucrative. And we'll probably build it up yes. much the same way as we have Kat as a Kadak. Man, I really, I do enjoy that mechanic. You know, it it does feel like there should be more construction works going on in, like, dwarf cities. I kind of like that. It, it feels like you're spending more time managing those aspects, which feels very dwarfy to me. You know, vibes, it checks out. Uh, yeah, I guess we're heading straight here. Huh? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That will be the next turn. That will be the end of Clan Rictus. Unless they pulled some funny business, which they entirely might have. Let's be honest. Uh, Town of Gorgoth is looking a little bit worse for wear, so we'll repair that. I mean, I'd rather it not fall, but I'm not sure we can really afford to get the Gates of Tsar. Or Howling Rock. And I really don't want to sell them. This territory. Or them, certainly. Because that's what I quite like to do. If I have territory I don't really want to try and babysit, I'll just sell it to a friendly neighbour. We don't have any. We don't have any friendly neighbours. A lot of unfriendly ones, though. But maybe we can make one of them friendly. But that would be a grudging, because, I mean, who's who's going to try and make friends with an Urk or a... You know, or a, uh, or a Dawi Zar? Nah, not going to work. Not for me. Plan of Verms have been destroyed, which is a problem because I think it's Queek that's taken it all over. Though so these guys too, clearly. Bit of both, I suppose. Clan Verms have been obliterated. Uh, training dummies. Extra 15 melee attack before turns for, for Thorgrim's army. That's um, pretty good. Really good. Dwarf Warriors with 47 melee attack is, is it's a mood. So this army has undertaken a rigorous new training regime focused on frontline combat, yielding excellent results. All units now have improved melee attack ability, uh, capabilities, but in four turns they're going to forget about that. Which is a bit silly. Alright, come on lads. Boop. Uh, oh my god, there's an army in here. There's an army in here. We can absolutely auto-resolve this if we want. But we haven't done a battle today. We have a lot of warp grinders. Which, honestly... If you're fighting a bunch of dwarfs, that's not a bad idea. Because just the the like the seismic snare and the warp quake is just going to pin and mess up a bunch of our guys real effectively. And then when they get in combat themselves, like, alright, they have a terrible melee attack, but huge weapon strength. And they're going to have to land some hits on us. It's going to hurt. <laughs> Devastating flanker, really. Double charge bonus from charging the rear. I mean... Is that necessary at all? Like, seriously? Like, 16 charge bonus. Okay. I mean, I guess that does add up. So charge bonus is added to melee attack, right? And then it, and then it slowly, over time, will, like, fade uh, after you've charged, basically. That's why cycle charging is good. You want to, like, cycle in and out. Because, um, you know, you get better attacks each time. 
Also, there's impact damage, so like when you actually hit an enemy unit, it, it, it's, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of weird nonsense. It doesn't really tell you on the card. But anyway, um, they're not that quick, so they're going to get subtle impact damage. But still, charging good, basically. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So 16 charge bonus on that. On that, add to that 20 melee attack. Suddenly, that's not terrible. So I guess that is quite a fun concept, isn't it? Quite a fun idea. But um, yeah, those two abilities are going to have. Uh, shall we? Fight them. It is going to be open field, which is a little scary. A bunch of warp fire throws too. Oh boy, this is real iffy, you know. Okay, so you got reinforcements coming over here. <laughs> Not many, but that, that guy could hurt. That guy could hurt us. Uh, also, we're in horrible chaos dwarf territory. It's much like dwarf territory, but you know they've discovered crude oil. Which is, uh, you know, bad, bad. Okay, this is pretty bonkers. Uh, could Vanguard, could Vanguard, and blow them all up? Probably not, though, right? Probably not. Probably won't do that. Uh, do they have much of the way of range? They don't, so I should still be able to. Yeah, they got, well, they got the warp fight throws, actually, which could be a bit of a bit of a threat. Uh, even to our gyro bombers, so we'll have to be careful of them. But, yeah, I think we're just kind of getting stuck in, aren't we? I think that's largely the plan, which um, I don't really like. I don't really like that that has to be the plan. It's a bit of an iffy plan. Not a fan of my own plan, I know. It's, that's the problem. The best I've got. <laughs> right. Uh, you guys right on the flanks also feels a bit silly. We're gonna leave you guys kind of in reserve, honestly. I'm gonna kind of leave you guys in reserve. All right, they're all actually coming for me as well, so I need to need to shimmy. Alright, try and kill some of these guys. And of course, of course. Alright, War is a dragon fire power, so apparently I'm clean up duty. Uh I'll just start shooting into there. Alright, let's pull you back. Uh yeah, you need to come back over here, mate. And, yeah, you just get stuck in, that's fine. Alright, you get some shots in over here. And, I mean, we're doing some great damage to the blasting charges. So that's good. Oh? You know what? Let's let's go for the let's go for the center. Oh, it looks like they are anyway. This is all very scary. Alright, you lot, I reckon, need to start dealing with the warp fire throwers first and foremost. Alright, let's try not to get stunned, alright? Alright, got those warp grinders. Let's lower Tretch's defences. Get a nice cheeky little rear charge. Alright, those wall fire throwers are having a terrible day. Oops. Let's go for those next ones. Alright, you can get a rear charge into there while Thorgrim can handle them. Right, okay, this is looking really good. This is looking good. I mean, it stings a bit. <laughs> well, it stings a little. Alright, we're going to stop it from moving. With the smoke bomb. They slow them down. And we'll bomb them as they run. Yeah, we'll try and hit them too. Alright, Thorgrim again, not many kills. Not many kills. Things keep running away from him. Before he can kill him, which is real disappointing. What are you doing? Oh. I've been howling warp gale. 
And yeah, this Jeepson's are a problem. So they can't move. Yeah, this seems to be going quite well. Alright, come on, Thorgrim. Come on, mate. Oh, we're doing great over here. Tretch is getting wrecked by the, uh, by the Longbeards, by the looks of it. Alright, don't get stunlocked, please. You. Alright, excellent. Uh, do you want to keep shooting them? <laughs> yeah, keep shooting. Perfect. So this is a seed battle, so, you know. This is a settlement battle, so we win. You know, everything will be dead. We don't have to worry about them running away and coming back. Well, like, maybe one of them, maybe this guy. This warlock master. Give them some more ammo, because we can. Ooh, that's going to sting. Cheeky little git. All right, let's lower that guy's melee defense. Yeah, you know, long beard struggling there. Hammer is just having a great time over here, running to the aid of Thorgrim, who really needed no aid at all. Um, all right, start shooting him. Let's smoke bomb him so he's easier to shoot. And yeah, when, if he's dead, he's the only guy that wasn't in the settlement. So, so you know, it's the way to go. Yeah, you're gonna shoot him again. All right. Good lad. Good lad. Let's try and get a bit closer to him. Oh, there he goes. Done. All right. Hopefully, that is the end of Clan Rectus. All right. Boop. Boop. Clan Rectus destroyed. Hell yes. All right. Uh, Tower of Gorgoth, do you want to upgrade that? I don't know. I just did. Hope it's the right call. So, yeah, they're all dead. Grumbling Guard. Love the Grumbling Guard. So the Grumbling Guard have an aura that helps you uh, restore your vigor. And like I said in a previous episode, I did, right? I did mention it. I usually mention it. Um, vigor is good for dwarves. Because if they get tired, their armor isn't as effective. Because your armor gets tired, I suppose. Uh, I, do, I do think it makes sense, though. Like, actually. I know it's funny to say your armor gets tired. But also, like, if you're more tired, then it's much easier for people to get hits in, like in weak points in your armor. You know, it's much easier for someone to stab you in the armpit if you don't really have the energy to, like, you know, shimmy, <laughs> like, away from the blade. So, like, I think I think it kind of makes sense. Though you could argue that that should be more represented by melee defense. It's, you know, there's arguments to be made. Anyway. Oh, the Brotherhood of Grimnir as well, the Doomseekers. And another Dwarf Bride. Uh, income from all buildings. We should probably get an army over here because Queek will be coming for us. He might go for Crookback Mountain first. I almost hope he does because Thorgrim's going to have to come back this way. He's probably going to have to attack in this little nook, isn't he? I am honestly a little worried about um, the ogres, though. I don't think I've ever seen them steamroll like this. 14 satellites. Like, they're doing much better than I am. Which is, you know, surprising. So let's see, I am going to get a new lad of some kind. I mean, could wait for Kazdor Grobinata. He is ranger trained. 15% um, extra speed for the army is really good. When can I get him? Three more turns. Uh, I can't wait that long. I'm going to recruit a lord and then I'm going to swap him out. Oh, he's also ranger trained. All right, I guess Story Holdfast, who ironically is really fast. <laughs> okay. Is it, it's, it's not that he holds fast, right? It's that if you ask him to hold something, he's really fast. He'll, he'll, he'll run straight to that thing to hold it for you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's do this. Summon me. It was just an ironic name. And yeah, I'm putting him here because this is easy like for them to sort of run up this way to get to me. Um, and Karak, Karak is better defended. You know, I'm pretty confident that can fight off an army. Eh, I'm confident-ish. Confident enough. <laughs> probably get an army here, though, shouldn't I? Probably. Probably actually recruit the things that I need to defend this place. Um, against Skaven. I think we are just going to go with a bunch of Miners of Blasting Charges again. 
I think they are a great supplement to uh, to a garrison like this. Because you have you know, a bunch of dwarf warriors and stuff. But if everything is at kind of half health before the dwarf warriors have to fight it, that's going to help a lot. If everything's at half health, the quarrelers are going to be able to pick off more enemies. You know, it's just it's just a great opening gambit. It really is nice. Really is good for punching a hole in a bunch of uh, bunch of skaven, as well as like as well as just like doing a bunch of damage over over a unit. It also makes the enemy really fast to retreat. Just a big burst of damage like that. Um, damage taken is sort of, again, like it's on a curve, like charge bonuses. So you take a bunch of damage, it hits your leadership quite a lot, and then that fades over time. So if you're taking damage over a very long period of time, you'll probably stay in the fight for a lot longer. But if you take a bunch of damage all at once, you're more likely to run. So, um, you know, it's good. It's good. Do I need Root March as well? Probably not. Probably not. Let's get Axe Lord. So the basic stuff can be um, a bit stockier. A bit more melee attack and defense for him. And we should probably get something spicy, shouldn't we? Although we can recruit all this stuff in a single turn, so, you know. If it looks like something's going to come attack us. Because that is one advantage we have, is fighting Queek, he's probably going to show up here in the Underway stance. So we'll be able to, you know, react to it. We won't suddenly just be under siege. Uh, also, Thorgrim has a level. Let's do advanced forging so we can get more oath gold from buildings now that we're actually doing that. That would be great. Um, and then... Where are we? Not that lot. Um, honored by Grimnir. That'll be our slayers, our hammerers. Uh, not long beers, though. Long beers are here? Yeah, long beers are over blessed by Grungni. Should I do that one first? Maybe. I kind of want both of them. Um, artillery stuff's great too, honestly. Shoots quicker. It's all pretty good, to be fair. This is actually like, I, I think the dwarfs are one of the worst factions for this. Um, I think they're the best designed. <laughs> like, in that, if you have any army, you're probably going to tick a bunch of these boxes. You're probably going to have, like, stuff from a bunch of different, you know, sort of uh, different niches. Whereas every other faction, usually you just go all in on one thing that that lord is good at, and usually you're laughing, you know. Uh, though arguably we could do that with Thorgrim as well. We could just have an entire army of hammerers. I don't think much could stand up to that, frankly. Let's go honoured by Grimnir first, just so we can, you know, at least tick the we care a lot about hammerers box. We'll have uh, 80 melee attack. And frostbite. Crazy. That's crazy powerful. Love that. Love that. Hammers are good. Uh, let's also get you... Yeah, more ammo for the hero's army. Um, so these are all still just on two, sadly. Should be two in a bit, really. But that's not really how that works. It'd be nice if we could actually get like additional... Um, Blasting charges from leveling up a hero like that. But new, no, new, no, just a big research. Uh, let's let's end the episode. Yeah, that's a neat trick. Uh, so on our trip home, right? We got pretty good replenishment, and it's only going to go up because I think as we start heading home, um, well, not home. We're probably heading to Black Iron Mine. To be honest, I think heading down this way is probably smartest. If we got this area defended. Um, but yeah, if we if we start headed this way, every couple of steps, right, every time his army is replenished, we'll teleport him off to a quest battle, and then we get a bunch of his equipment en route, so that way we're not wasting his time, just like trundling back through our territory. I think that should work out quite well. Any of these factions could declare war on us, so we might just have to let them fall, honestly. You know, we'll see. It's, um... It's a little perilous, but my god, we have five hiking degrees now. It's absurd. <laughs> That's so silly. But oh well. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you've been enjoying this. I'm, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I, I'm, I'm enjoying the deeps. I'm enjoying playing a, a more traditional kind of um, dwarf um, campaign. You know, just fighting in the in the world's edge mountains and such. It's fun. I've never I've never done battle against the chaos dwarfs as the dwarfs, so I'm looking forward to that. So, you know, it's I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Like I said in the first episode, you know, I complain about the things I love. And uh, so clearly, I must love 
um, playing the dwarves a hell of a lot. So guys, if you're enjoying this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.